Hi and welcome to my beautiful office. In this video, we look back on what was the year 2019 and what I hope to achieve for this year. Hi and welcome to my channel. Hi and welcome to my office. Hello and welcome to my multi-purpose studio. In a small reserve I call my office. Didn't quite achieve exactly what I was after but in some areas I have. And one of the things that I was really wanting to boost up and speed up was being much better with all the things to do with editing of my videos. So improve my skills, get more highly skilled in that area for when I make my wildlife documentary. So putting more videos on, I hope to achieve that. And I partly have. Not quite where I wanted to be, but I'm getting closer. So I've gone from one video a month, or two a month, to one a week. Puts a bit of pressure on me to uh, push myself. Now one of the other things that I wanted to achieve was get more subscribers onto my channel by putting more videos out and going onto social media. So I managed to get 700 new subscribers for the whole year, which is Pretty good, can't really whinge at that. But I was hoping, mozzies, sorry. I was hoping for at least a couple of thousand. Now the reason why I wanted a lot more subscribers was not to particularly make money off YouTube. It was more about being able to help for my advertising for when I go to teach in the new year. I'm hoping by the middle of the year, I'll start to have things worked out for the spring to be able to teach photography. I want to direct them to YouTube so they can see, wow, he's got 10,000 subscribers. He must be good. Give them confidence in me that I can teach them properly. So that didn't quite happen, but hopefully in the new year it will. And there's a couple of other reasons as well, but I won't ramble on too long. With making YouTube videos, let's have a look at what it takes to be able to do them. 26 hours or more it takes to make a video. Sounds like a lot, but once you start breaking it down, it doesn't sound like a lot. So let's do that, let's break it down. Now I like to put my videos out by Tuesday at the latest. So I've managed to be able to achieve that mostly for the year. So Wednesday, Thursday, I'll mull over in my mind what I wanna talk about next. What I want to put in my next video, would it be interesting? So I'll get it sorted out in my head, streamline it, then go for it on Friday afternoon. I still have a day job. So I'll come home from work, have a shower, shoot out here. First thing I need to do is study the Agile Intercontinence. That's the reason why I've been able to make a lot more videos this year is I don't have to study them right through the whole year. It's only certain seasons now like I am at the minute, summer, plenty for me to study. So I don't need to worry about that as much this year and into next year. So I can concentrate more on the videos. So I'll come out, do an hour and a half to two hours, actions on I might do a bit more on a Friday afternoon of the Agile, then turn the camera on myself, do a, speak to the camera for an hour or so, Take that back, have a look at what, what was good and what was bad and throw out the bad, put the good into a new folder, ready for Saturday morning to start editing. But Saturday morning first, I like to come out for a walk, study the Agile, be out here for two hours probably, talk to the camera, fix up maybe what I didn't like of the day before or continue on from the day before. Take that back home. I'll start doing a bit of editing, then I'll break it up with doing domestic chores. Then later on in the afternoon, two, three o'clock, come back out here, study the Agile for a couple of hours. If things are really good, oh, I'll put all my effort in and slip in a bit of speaking to the camera again. Hopefully try and finish off doing all the talking to the camera. Back home repeat the process again, 
really start getting into editing now of the video, cutting it all up, you know, colour grade, everything like that, checking the audio, start to get it ready for Sunday morning where I'll really put some hard effort in. All right, we come to Sunday morning. Repeat everything that I've just said. Come out, do a bit of filming with our job, go back home. Really get stuck into editing, get deep into it, no housework. Uh, come back out in the reserve, have a bit of a break. Study the agile, go back home, get stuck into it right up until 10, maybe 11 o'clock at night sometimes. Editing, really have to get this ready because it's the best time for me to do this on a Sunday afternoon. So I've pretty well got things straightened out. There'll be leftover things that I didn't quite get to or I'm not quite happy about and I'm, not, I'm unsure. I'll come home on a Monday afternoon after my day job, have a bit of a, a wander out in the reserve, relax a little bit, study the agile, go back home, go over that video in detail, make sure that I haven't missed anything. Come Tuesday, go over that video in more detail. I've had time away from it now. Have a run over of it, really make sure it's right. Tweak it if I need to, then process it so that it's ready to go onto YouTube. I need to make a front cover, a, a photograph or something like that to draw people in. It's got to be eye catching. So when you typing in wildlife photography, whatever, it comes up, catches your eye over all the others. 26 hours is pretty regular. Now we break that down on uh, a couple of hours on the Friday afternoon. I'll probably work for eight to nine hours on a Saturday. Sunday will be anywhere between 10 to 11 hours. Probably two to three hours on your Monday afternoon. A couple of more hours on Tuesday. I enjoy it right up until probably about Monday. I'm bloody sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of listening to myself. I want to get this video out. So you do end up rushing things and missing things occasionally. Just little things that matter to me, might not matter to you. Well, now it's time for the real fun part, editing our video, creating something wonderful if we possibly can. Right, open Premiere Pro up. I'll make a couple of folders so I can keep everything nice and neat. Generally name them. One for me, one for B-roll, whatever I need to demonstrate what I'm talking about maybe. Clips or photographs. So put them in their own folders, have everything ready to go. Now first off, I like to grab my first clip, put it into the edit window in Premiere Pro. So it's a double click on the clip itself. We have to create a start point and an end point. So cut out the crap at the start because I usually start to talk and I might stuff it up a couple of times. So I'm really not happy with that. Or I'll be looking at the monitor and I'll see that the audio isn't working or something like that. So we cut off, make a start. Then we listen right through the whole clip, listening for any mistakes I've made, where I can cut here and there, nip and tuck bits out. I won't do anything now, I'll just go right to the end, find the end point and cut that off. Drop it, the clip onto my timeline. Not touching it just at the minute, I'm just laying things out. So I'll repeat that process right to the end. Now, we come to that bit where we have to uh, start fixing up audio, clean it up a bit or whatever, colour grade, all those sort of things. Now I like to do this before I do anything else because if I start hacking a clip up then I've got lots of little clips that I've got to try and fix up the audio. So I do it when it's all in one piece. Quick and efficient way to do things. So we go into Adobe Audition first up, fix my audio. I make presets and I made them a preset for each of my microphones. I've got the lav mic on at the minute, 
So I'll put it into Adobe Audition, drop a preset that I've made that smooths my voice out, makes the dynamic range better so that everything's fairly even. Then I'll normalize to 3 dB. Back into Premiere Pro, repeat the process right through every bit where I'm talking. Now we'll color grade. Again, I have presets made for each of my cameras that I have so that things are quick and easy. Now these aren't generally particularly spot on, but the condition of lighting might be slightly different, so there might be a little bit of tweaking, but overall I'm dropping them on and they're usually pretty good, especially for YouTube anyway. Add a bit of sharpening. I have a sharpening preset, so I don't have to go look for sharpening tool. I just simply, it's at the side of me there, just grab it, drag and drop. We're done. We're ready to go on to the next phase, and that is hacking that bloody video up to death. Because, you know, most of the time I make a video, it could be 30 minutes long. Keeping people interested in the video, you have to get rid of some of the crap, some of the waffle. Might, might be of interest to me, but it might not be of interest to you. So we'll cut those bits out. And generally speaking, if I've got a 30 minute clip that I've started, 30 minute video that I've started with, I can hack that down to 20 minutes. You can cut it right down, but you have to be tough on yourself. Does that piece matter? If the answer is no, cut it out. Lots of honey eaters playing with each other. Three different types. Yellow eared honey eater. Uh, white eared honey eater. White eared honey eater, yellow faced honey eater. If your video ends up being fairly short and you think, oh well, I could add something back on, do that. It's about being creative and making the right choices. So we've start hacking away, found some bits, and sometimes I swallow. Most people do that when they're talking to the camera. I've seen it on a lot of videos. A lot of people leave it in. I like to get rid of it if I possibly can. There's little gulps or, you know, get a dry mouth and you make that noise. I'll cut them out. Because you're looking at, say, 10 frames. Take that back home. Back home. Download again. And it normally isn't noticeable. That's what I'm always trying to do when I'm cutting. I want to make the cuts at least noticeable as possible. And then we talking about a certain subject. Uh, you can put a clip over it, over the cut. The start of it or at the end of it, wherever you like. It's about being creative or a photograph. So if something that you're talking about Whack it over a cut, it makes it look more professional. Nobody knows you've made a cut. Taken out something that you said wrong, or whatever. It's about being creative. The so hiding our cuts. A lot of uh, YouTubers don't worry about it. I do, I like to hide it if I can. Makes people uh, much more interested in what they're watching. They're not being distracted by cuts, it's horrible. Now we have to add music to create a bit of more atmosphere, make it, um, yeah, flashy, a bit more flashy, a bit more interesting to watch, a bit of music helps a hell of a lot create atmosphere. In a small reserve I call my office, birds come to breed every year. For birds to be successful at raising their young. They will not just need to be good at building nests. The project's finished. I'll render it and render the audio as well. Then check it over again. Have I missed anything? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little look at behind the scenes of how I go about making YouTube videos and swatting flies away.
and mozzies for my face. Yeah, a quick little look. I didn't go into any great detail, which some of you might have wanted me to, but there's only so much time you can do on a video before people start getting bored. So we'll leave it at that. I'm looking at very soon buying an Osmo action camera. I think I've decided on one of them. It'll just be better with me concentrating on filming my wildlife and I can have the action camera there if I want to film myself or a little bit of b-roll or whatever. It's just going to make life a lot easier, especially on long overnight hikes. So yeah, looking at that, we'll see how we go. And this year I'd also like to buy a drone. I think it's time to help me out with my wildlife documentaries. Big year coming up for me. I really want to grow my channel, grow myself, improve how I speak to the camera, all those sort of things. I'm running out of time, a time limit that I have for myself to make this wildlife documentary. Has to be sooner rather than later. Enough of me waffling. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click on my pretty little face down there. Hit the little bell, get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at my channel, look at all the things I've been doing over the years. There's crazy stuff there. I also talk about flash photography in a forest environment. Any, anything to do with photography. Plenty of tips there for you. And the filming of wildlife and me practicing and making little wildlife documentaries, voiceovers, practicing there. The list goes on and on and on. There'll be something of interest to you, I'm sure. Click on my other pretty little face just here at the end of this video in screens. That'll take you to my channel. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife and I'll see you on the next one in the new year. Happy New Year to you all. Have a great little break and I'll catch you next week. See ya. Now I'm being distracted by the Agile Anticonus juveniles. They are all around me this morning. I have an absolute ball and I have learnt a ton of things just in this morning session, watching them. Somebody's just texted me. Interruptions, we'll have a look at it after. Cut a clip, uh, video down. I'll be making a lot of clips, cuts with this too, because I keep saying the wrong words. <laughs>